this is Christine Hoover from GraceCoversMe.com, and I want to welcome you to the By Faith Podcast, where each week in this mini summer season, I'm talking to a pastor's wife about how she navigates her role and ministry while also thriving in her walk with the Lord, her marriage, and her own unique gifts and passions. I hope you've had a chance to listen to the first episode where I shared the foundational truths that anchor me in my own ministry. At the beginning of that episode, I shared my heart for this series of conversations. I want to encourage women in various contexts of ministry, but I also want to be helpful to those who aren't in any type of vocational ministry. I hope that these conversations will help you understand and care for your leaders. Today's guest, I think, does a wonderful job of helping us understand what it means to be a pastor's wife. Her name is Kirstie Dates. She's the wife of Charlie Dates, who is the pastor of Progressive Baptist Church in Chicago. She's also mom to two adorable kids that you can see on Instagram and the owner of an online shop called Preacher Monday, which is a collection of art and stationery that, as her tagline says, is inspired by the pulpit and intended for the people. You can find her collection at PreacherMonday.com. In our conversation today, Kirstie and I talked about what it means to be a pastor's wife. We talked about expectations, mainly that we put on ourselves, but we also discussed the joys and challenges of ministry. Kirstie shares how she has learned to say no, what she would say to those women who are just getting started, and what her mentor told her that stuck with her and helped her in her role. I want you to listen specifically for that advice because every episode in this mini season is going to end with a question that we'll be discussing over on my Instagram page, which is at Christine Hoover 98. You get a choice for your question this week. You can choose to answer the first question, what's the most helpful advice you've been given in ministry? Or you can answer the second question, what's the advice you most give to other women in ministry? I'll remind you about this at the end of the show, but for now, let's jump into my conversation with Kiersey Dates. I'm so honored today to have Kiersey Dates on the podcast. Hi, Kiersey. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm really excited to get to talk to you. I, as I just told you before we started recording, I heard your husband preach this spring at the MLK 50 conference, and it was by far my, my favorite. (laughs) (laughs) And he just impressed me so much. And, um, so I wanted to talk to you because of that. I'm like, there must be a really great woman behind this man. So let's get her on here. So will you introduce yourself and tell us about you and your family? Sure. Sure. Well, my name is Kirstie, as she said, um, I'm married to Dr. Charlie Edward Dates. Um, I just call him Charlie. <laughs> you don't call him doctor at home. I call, her, call him doctor at home. That is true, but that's his formal title. <laughs> but I have two children. I have a son. He's going to be seven soon and he's super excited. And his name is Charlie, Charlie too. And I have a daughter, Claire Elizabeth, and she is five, and she is excited to be going to kindergarten next year. Wow. And so they keep me quite busy, and I just love being a mom. They are, they are so wonderful. So that's my little family. Um, we serve in Chicago, Illinois, at the Progressive Baptist Church. It is a historic church. We'll be 100 years old next year. So we have a lot to celebrate. God has yes. been so good and so faithful down the years. And so it's really an honor to be there and to be serving alongside my husband in ministry there. And are you from Chicago? I am not from Chicago. I'm from Champaign, Illinois, which is about two hours south. If you've okay. heard of the University of Illinois, that's where we met. <laughs> so we got married and we moved to Chicago where my husband is from. So. Okay. So you were going to college there and that's where you met your husband? Yes, ma'am. That's where we met. And um, actually, he took me to my high school senior prom. So he was the coolest college guy at a senior prom. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was the coolest senior to bring a college guy as a date. So that was fun. But we dated throughout college and I missed divinity school season. And then we got married a little later after that. Now, did you know when you were dating him that he was going to be a pastor? I knew that he'd been called to preach. I did not know how soon after we got married down the road that would be um, in the books. So we actually served at a church here in Chicago for about five years before he became the pastor of Progressive. 
Mm -hmm. It's, it's been a good journey. Yeah. So you said it's a historic church. So tell us some, a little bit about progressive and what your church is like. Yes. Well, we, um, as I said, we're going to be celebrating a hundred years next year. And, um, it is a historic African-American church in Chicago. If you've been to Chicago and you know where the White Sox play, you've passed our church a million times because it's right alongside the highway. Um, but the founding pastor T.E. Brown, um, was a stalwart in the community. They did a lot of service, um, to a lot of migrants from the South who moved from the South to Chicago for better opportunity. And so we have that history in Chicago as being an independent church, as being a member of the Progressive Baptist Convention, um, as being a church that champions civil rights and justice for um, the members of the community. And so we've been carrying that tradition on. He's actually the youngest pastor. Um, He was called at 30. Um, So he is the youngest serving pastor, but we've been there this summer. It'll be seven years. So it's really great. We are a multi-generational church, which um, when we first got there, it was kind of funny. The deacon who was involved in our transition was like, congratulations, you guys have basically um, brought the average age of the church down (laughs) because we joined and we were kind of young. So, but it was really great great to see the transition and the growth and just young families join and just seeing that everyone really embracing where the church is going. So that has been quite wonderful to watch the past seven years. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's great. I enjoy being there. I, well, that's good. It's always good when you hear a pastor's wife say they enjoy the church where their husband serves because not everyone can say that. That is true. That is true. But I can say the same for our church that I, I would be a part of this church, even if my husband wasn't the pastor, which, which I love. Same. Yeah. I think I could say the same. I think the people are wonderful. I think everyone has, um, their own reasons for doing what they do. And so it's been quite interesting embracing those traditions and embracing um, where people are and encouraging them to embrace the younger people and to keep moving, you know, mm. so, <laughs> so it's been a good journey. Yeah. Well, I'm imagining putting myself in your shoes coming mm-hmm. into the church that you just described. It sounds like a, a pretty big, pretty big shoes to fill for your husband but also as the pastor's wife, that's, well, I mean, a traditional church there, you know, sometimes it can feel that there are expectations that you're coming into. So I would love to talk to you about that, about the role of the pastor's wife, because every pastor's wife views their role differently because every pastor's wife is different, right? And every church context and where they live. And it's just, it can be very different from church to church and, and region of the country to another. And so I found that some women are kind of more behind the scenes and they're rooting for their husband, but they're really, they prefer to be behind the scenes and they don't really want to be out leading along with him. But then some are out front leaders and some are kind of somewhere in between. So I'd love to know where you, how you see your role, where you fit in that. Yeah, I I agree with you. Every pastor's wife is different. Every context is different. Um, And thank God we don't have to fit a certain mold, you know, um, that we've been given free will and the ability to use our personality to serve the Lord. Um, And I think uh, my primary role is to support Charlie. (laughs) And I think any loving wife understands that. Um, But even in the role as a pastor wife, it can seem a little more so, if if, if you will. I think that... I would consider myself a supporter. Um, As I mentioned, when we first got there, um, we were pretty young. And actually, he was called to Progressive in March. And I was due to have our first child in May. So you can imagine that I was in no place. Yes, I was in no place to start anything, to take over anything. Um, And nor did I really have that desire. I've received a lot of instruction, a lot of wisdom from other women who are in the pastorate. And they said, just pray. And that was my first, I said, okay, I'm going to prayerfully support. That's the first thing I'm going to do. But thankfully, I was able to use some of the skills that I love, um, that the Lord has blessed me with to help kind of behind the scenes getting started. So 
in the traditional black church, there's an installation where it's a big service, big celebration. And so being able to help behind the scenes and planning that while I was away caring for a newborn was fun. And then being able to be involved in some of the projects that were quietly going on as opposed to being up front cheerleading and championing some cause, um, that was great. But I feel like in the last two years, I've been burdened to um, really focus on children's music ministry. Hmm. Um, I am a f- come from a family of musicians. My mother is um, a professor of music at the U of I, and she's also a classical singer, and my dad can play almost any instrument. And so I grew up singing. Music was very important, playing instruments. And I just felt that, wow, I remember how much music meant to me as a child and meant to me while I was at church singing the children's choir. And I was like, I'd love to kind of revive that at this church. And so for the past two years, that's what I've been giving myself to, working alongside the children's music or children's ministry workers and really doing some special events and special performances around Mm -hmm. featuring our young people. So that is the ministry I really love. And I've really decided to say, this is the thing that I'm going to commit to and work with. And um, I believe the church has embraced us and um, really worked with us in getting the children up and ready and enjoying what they do. Mm -hmm. And I believe music is so important. And I think um, the more we can get that in the child's heart, the more melody we can get in the child's heart, the more soft they are to the things of God. So that has been what I've decided to focus on um, as my role, I guess, as you'd say, official (laughs) role, other than just being an encourager and a supporter to every other um, ministry leader and ministry worker. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's easy to want to go in and change something or, oh, why are you doing it that way, you know? (laughs) But I think what people want, what church members want from their pastor and their pastor's wife is, you're doing a good job. Keep on working for the Lord. God is pleased. I know that he's getting the honor and the glory from what you're you're putting in. So I think that has been my, my main thing. And I continue to do that even now. I've taken on the mantle of being over the children's music news. So I love how you touched on both official and unofficial. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes we don't have official roles, but right. we always have unofficial roles. And I would say not just roles, but opportunities to bless people in the church. I love how you talked about just encouraging people that we have. I feel like our words hold weight when we when we encourage somebody in the church. Yeah. It's it's a special word to them because it comes from somebody who is leading and who has influence. So I love that. Um, but I think, do you ever find that it's hard to navigate, uh, expectations that if you say, Oh, I love music and this is my heart and this is what God's gifted me for. But do you, have there been times where people have said, Oh, we wish you would do this, or this is what the old pastor's wife did. And how do you, how do you navigate that, Kirsty? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's interesting is I've not had that blatant, um, this is what you should do. I think for the most part, I've had my own internal, yes. oh, I've seen this done. Maybe I should be doing that. Um, and it's a very uncomfortable feeling <laughs> when you feel like, oh, should I be doing this? Because you see a void or you feel like, okay, I may have an inkling toward that, but I don't feel as confident to take on that role or that project. Um, And I think it's been more of an internal thing for me rather than external, thankfully. Um, Some of the mentors that I've embraced have just said, do you be consistent, pray and support. And I think it's often easy coming into a situation wanting to help. I think women, we want to help. We want to get our knees and elbows dirty and just go in wherever we think there's a need because we're so used to feeling it. Um, But for me, it's been, okay, Lord, yes, there's a need, but is this what I need to be doing? Mm -hmm. Uh, Is this going to take away from how I'm serving at home, how I'm mothering, how I'm being a good wife? And sometimes I have to say, check myself, like, am I wanting to do this because X, Y, (laughs) Z? Or am I wanting to do this because... I'll be seen or I'll get the kudos or I'll need that affirmation from this group of people. Um, I think it really is a heart check and you have to be committed to hearing from the Lord. Mm-hmm. If, if you're not, then you'll get into various <laughs> projects and you'll just run yourself 
thinking that, oh, it was a good idea, but it really wasn't a God idea. It wasn't what he placed in your heart. So um, being prayerful and being intentional and making sure internally you're doing things for the right reason Mm -hmm. versus what you think needs to be done is, is a steady walk. And I don't think you, I guess, arrive at that early. It's kind of an ongoing kind of journey. Absolutely. I've been doing this for 20 years almost. And I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing and I'm learning as I go, but that's what keeps me dependent upon the Lord. I think if I thought I knew what I was doing, that would be, that would be bad. (laughs) So would you say that the challenges of the pastor's wife role for you are mainly that internal wrestling or what? Um, I'd say yes. I'd say also a challenge would be um, being the same as everyone, but being different. (laughs) <laughs> as well as being the same. Someone um, can look at you and say, oh, she's just like me, but they put you on a pedestal because you are the pastor's wife. And with that comes some expectations from who knows where, from their pa- previous church, from their previous pastor's wife, from whatever they think you should be doing. Um, I think a challenge is making sure internally you are doing the will of the Lord, making sure that you are walking in his word daily, that you're staying in tune with him, making sure that you're being visibly supportive to your husband um, is something that helps you not kind of give into those voices. Um, And that is, you know, that's, that's a good thing. I think church oftentimes, or, or it's interesting, I think in a historic or traditional church, there are some things that parishioners or church members will say, oh, the pastor wife has to do this, you know, or or in a casual or contemporary setting, everything is more friendly and there could be some lines that could potentially be blurred. And I think it's very important to make sure that you maintain your consistency um, as being loving, as being supportive, um, but also knowing that your primary goal is to glorify God um, and to serve your husband and to mother your children if you have them, and then the ministry comes after that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that is a challenge that I think takes so many forms. Um, you think you may be okay and over something. You're like, oh, I didn't realize that was still a concern of mine until it, it comes up in a different form. Um, but the Lord has been gracious. He's been walking with me through this, and I'm grateful to have one, wonderful mentors who help me through these things as well. So. Mm-hmm. It's been a good journey. I really have no qualms about this transition. I feel I feel really at home with where I am, and I'm grateful for the ministry and for the church. I mean, there's nothing like a church, you know. There's nothing else out there like that, um, and so that's that's just it's just wonderful to be part of God's big family. So I'm just grateful. <laughs> You keep mentioning a mentor, and I am going to ask the question that many pastors' wives are li- or who are listening are asking. How did you get a mentor in ministry? Yeah, well, it's interesting. I have a few different mentors. Up close, my mentor is my mother. Uh, My dad is a preacher pastor. And so I've seen this modeled. Um, He was not a senior pastor growing up, but he became one a little bit later in life, in my adult life. So I've seen her matriculate through the church. Um, And so I have her perspective, and I think she does a marvelous job at being as objective as she can. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I also have um, a wonderful lady from the church we served before we got to Progresso. Her name is Jamel Meeks, and we were serving at Salem Baptist Church in Chicago with Pastor Meeks as the pastor. And it's a big church, but she's been really, really um, gracious with her time and with her wisdom sharing with me. One thing that she said that I thought, and I've kept with me even from the beginning, was that she mentioned, you know, everyone talks about, oh, what should I be doing and what should I focus on? And she would always say, you're juggling. (laughs) Whatever's in your hand at the time is what you focus on. And I thought about that as as a young mom. It's like, oh, gosh, you know, what should I be focusing on? I don't want anything, any of the balls to fall. But what I'm having in my hand gives the priority. And that has really carried me Mm. uh, in my ministry and in my service to my family. So those two primarily have been my uh, mentors um, that I can call or text real quick and say, I have a question. <laughs> uh, so they, they've been really, really uh, helpful to me in my life. I'm really grateful for them. 
Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, yeah. you've mentioned the the joy that you have in being a pastor's wife too. And I love that. I love, I love, love, love getting to talk to pastor's wives who are, who don't have that chip of bitterness and resentment on them. And I think all of us at some point have, we, we struggle with that. We can struggle with that. And it's for me, it's a, okay, it's there again. And God, help me, you know, I don't want to be bitter toward your people or toward, <laughs> toward the church or anything like that. And so tell me about the joys that have come for you being a pastor's yeah. wife. I think, you know, it's interesting. And as I mentioned, you know, when we first got there, I was very, very pregnant and uh, they just embraced us. I mean, it's like, I got a whole nother family of of grandmothers and aunts, and <laughs> you know, just, you know, they always tell me now, make sure the child does this or, you know, so in a very loving way, they've been very, very supportive. And I think that is something that, you know, everyone does not experience. And so I felt like, okay, Lord, you're winking at us. Thank you for this opportunity. And also in conversation with, with church members and seeing how we're all like growing in Christian fellowship, I think those are God winks too. Oftentimes you're not going to hear, oh, I was really blessed by that sermon or the children did a great job singing today or, but you'll hear from somebody else or you can see the loving embrace or you could tell that the families are growing together. Those are the things that are just, you know, better than anything, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. those are things that are like treasures in heaven, you know, um, you sometimes we want the accolade here on earth, but we know that this work we may not even see what's actually being transmitted until, you know, on that great day. But we know that even in the working with the children, I know that I'm depositing as much as I can. And prayerfully later in life, a song or melody may come back or the scripture that we sung to may come back or just receiving, hey, I learned something today, you know, from a parent who I was te teaching their children. You know, some of those things are just like, wow, you know, this community is unlike any other Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful for the church because we are bombarded in the world with so many ideas, everyone's personal truths, and those things can become overwhelming. But I think when we come together as a church, we have this common hope and we get to share our hope. And so that has really been the joy of um, being in this role and just the joy of seeing my children grow up and enjoy church. <laughs> That's so important to me as well. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I think that's a good reminder for me and those listening to be on the lookout for those people that are a blessing and those things that you get to see God doing that other people might not get to see and yeah. to thank him for that, that you have the opportunity to be a part of a church like that. I love that. So we have a few questions from listeners and readers that they've sent in. And one was, how have you learned to embrace the role of pastor's wife as a platform for God's glory? Yeah, you know, um, this question was interesting for me because I was like, I never thought of it as a, a platform in that sense, because I feel like, especially today, everyone claims to have a platform. <laughs> you know, um, I feel like I've embraced my role as a wife first, and my husband happens to be a pastor. Um, and that's kind of how I first look at it. And I've known this for a while, obviously, because when I was dating him, he was preaching. Um, and so I knew that this was potential in our future. But I felt like my importance to him is serving our family. And I think oftentimes we see or we view the glory of God as like this the world seeing something grand that we're doing, that we're doing in front of millions of people, having, you know, millions of followers, and we're preaching, we're speaking at this conference and that kind of thing. But I really believe that I bring God most glory when I am lovingly serving my family. And when I honor my husband, I bring God glory. When I'm patient, <laughs> when I'm serving my family, just the every day, as what Christy Knuckles says, the glorious and the mundane, you know, I'm serving my family. And I believe that's the most honoring thing I can do to bring him glory. Now, do I see it as an opportunity, as you mentioned, to bring God glory in this role? Yes, I, I'm very prayerful, prayerful about the influence that I'm able to have in this, in this role and how I should use it. And I think the Lord has burdened my heart right now to use it with the children mm -hmm. in the ministry of music. 
um, but I'm also involved in the women's ministry as well. But I don't see myself as like over the women's ministry or a teacher or things of that sort. I see me using my gifts in this way. And I think if I'm able to do that, that's going to be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. And I think I would just encourage women who are in this role to just determine to give God your best, (laughs) you know, not get caught up in the performance thing because we are already significant in him because we are truly and deeply loved by him, but just determine to say, I I want to do everything I can to bring you glory And, and every little thing that you set out to do try to do that Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't have to be a a big thing it can just be the everyday thing and I believe that when you have the opportunity to do whatever that big thing is um the tracks that you've made in the everyday that's going to set you up for um, what God has for you Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. don't seek the opportunity just let it come to you if if you have that but really enjoy being who you are and where you are mm-hmm. in the present moment. Mm, that's so good. I think part of uh, embracing the role is not letting the challenges become the focus. Right. Saying, Jesus, you're worth these challenges. You're worth what this can sometimes cost me. Mm-hmm. And so how have you learned to do that? I think the Lord has been helping me with just the intentions of heart. You, you, you mentioned, you know, you're worth these challenges. Well, I think in light of what God has done for us, in light of what Jesus has done for us on the cross, it's kind of like, wow, for you to bear all of that for me, surely, surely I can deal with this difficult person. Yes. <laughs> surely I can deal with this difficult situation because you've given me the strength to overcome. Yes. And you've given me hope to overcome. Uh, we know that there's glory after this. And so whatever this is, God has given us the strength to endure it. And he wouldn't put anything on us that we can't bear. And I really believe that even though when it feels like, oh, Lord, what is this? Why do I have this task or this challenge? But he knows what he's doing. And I think because we don't know, we're finite. We have to trust his way. We have to trust what he has for us. We have to trust the seasons he places us in because oftentimes we may think we're going through something for ourselves, but we're also going through something because others need to see how we deal with the situation. So I say be encouraged, um, trust God every step of the way, but know that your test and your trial is not only for you, it's for others to see how God is using you and how God is working through you. Mm -hmm. So he helps us. He does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, being a pastor's wife has been like a greenhouse for my sanctification. <laughs> and I'm, and I say that with, with joy. I'm thankful for that. Th- yeah. This, this is what God has chosen for me. And this is where he's going to grow me and teach me to be like him. And for other people, it's something different and they have challenges with what he's called them to do as well. But right. I'm thankful for how God has grown my faith in this role specifically. So I have another question from a reader and she said, how have you known where to specifically invest your time and energy in service to the Lord through the church specifically? And how would you advise women who are new to this role to determine their own calling within the church? And how does this change according to seasons and capacity? There's a lot there. There's a lot there. And um, I don't want to seem too repetitive, but just talking about how I first got to the church and just in the, the, the physical state I was in, <laughs> the new family state I was in, I'd say that I didn't know at first. I knew that I wanted to help in any kind of way. And I think as women and as wives, that is our primary desire. And so I was helping. I was helping with different projects um, because I wanted to find myself useful. <laughs> and um I think that that was good for the time. I realized, you know, about two years ago that I was wanting to fill a um, hole I felt or that I felt burdened with the children's ministry. Um, But I think the Lord will tell you which way to go. Um, I know that for sure. And I think the projects that I did determine to do, they were good for that time. 
they weren't an ongoing, oh my gosh, why did I sign myself up for this? This is the worst thing ever. It wasn't bad. It was, <laughs> you know, it was like, okay, good. I, I did that. I did that. I did that. And I felt like, okay, Lord, I'm ready for something consistent. And also with my children being in the age group that I was serving, I felt, oh, this is wonderful. Uh, and it's, it's a passion of mine. I think mm-hmm. the Lord will give you those desires and those giftings um, for you not to use them. Mm-hmm. Answering the second part of that question, I would say a new pastor's wife needs to be an encourager, like first and foremost. Um, I think sometimes when you get into a new situation, you have the desire or the unction to get in and make better, <laughs> whatever better in your mind may be. Uh-huh. And we don't have reasonings for why people do what they do. We don't have We've not given time to listen to the history. And I think that's most important. Listen and encourage um, mm-hmm. those who are already doing the work. Um, be, be as supportive as you can of them. That don't, you don't have to join the ministry, <laughs> but support in the ways that are comfortable with you, uh, comfortable for you. And um, I believe God will honor that. And then as in my situation, he will give opportunity for you to use your gifts to serve the ministry. So um, that's what I would say. But, you know, the capacity and the seasons, I'm still figuring that out, you know, with being seven years in. Um, I think I'm in a, we're in a great season now. Um, and just learning the congregation, moving things forward, and knowing that, hey, for me right now as my children, that's where I want to serve. I want to be in a place where I know that I can impact them, not only at home, but they see their mom serving in church as well. So that's what I feel I am this season. Um, I'm not saying, I'm not limiting myself to um, just this. I'm open to what the Lord may have for me in the future, but I'm pretty pleased with where I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not asking for a new assignment, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm, I'm grateful for where God has placed me. So. Mm-hmm. Now, how does Charlie help in this area? Does he help you think through what you could do or potential opportunities? And how does that work for y'all? I think he's, he really is the best. We do have a lot of conversation <laughs> about what I could do, um, what I've been gifted with doing. I feel like I'm using the season right now to really establish the home front <laughs> making sure our home is a haven for our family and for those that we come in contact with. But in terms of how I am, and he really embraces what I do at the church. Um, and sometimes I'm like, dear, you don't have to mention me. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. People see me. I'm fine. You know, but he's like the prettiest woman in the world is over at children's music. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> he's really supportive in that way, but he's really supportive in some of the goals and desires that I have outside of, uh, I guess, church life. And so I'm grateful that I have someone who doesn't say, oh, this is what you have to do, <laughs> you know? But I think we we kind of balance each other in that. And uh, having different personalities, I think we really do complement each other. So I'm grateful for our marriage and how we get to um, serve the Lord together. That mm-hmm. really is something, right? <laughs> I mean, that's one of the joys of being a pastor's wife is you get to be a part of what your husband is doing. My husband always says, if I was a copier salesman, You wouldn't know anybody I worked with, any of my clients, you know, you'd be a separate life. And I do love that we get to do it together as a team. I love how you've brought out, you've brought out multiple things of, you've talked about gifts and personality that God gives us, that those are clues to how he might want to use us. You've talked about your husband and how he helped you think through that. And I think you've also, I like how you talked about the juggling what your mentor said about what's what's in your hand right now because I think that also is a clue for us that uh, you talked earlier about constantly reevaluating and and thinking through I do think that's true that it changes all the time but we do have clues by based on what's in our hand meaning small children as you've talked about or what our husband's needs are in that in that season but then also gifts and, and abilities and And I love how you said, God will tell you that we don't have to worry. I think for me, I've, I've tried to jump ahead of him so many times trying to make my way or figure it out. Or as you mentioned, I'm wanting approval from people based upon what I do. And I think if we can just slow down and be prayerful and look at the clues he's given us, he's going to make it clear 
and, and give us those opportunities. So I love how you've pointed those things out. But I do think also we want to talk about limits because mm-hmm. someone asked about that as well. And we've, we've, we've touched on it a little bit, but I would like to know how, how you respond when you know that the answer is no. How have you learned how to say no? And what do you actually say when there's something presented to you that you, you, you know pretty quickly, this is not something that God is asking me to do? What do you say? Yeah, um, those have been difficult because I can unknowingly nod my head. People read that as yes, <laughs> but sometimes I'm like, I don't even know how to respond in the moment. Um, I think I've gotten a little bit quicker with my no. Um, early on, I was, oh, well, let's see, you know, um, and that would give people hope. <laughs> And I'm like, oh gosh, why did I, why didn't I just say no? Cause I, you don't want to be a no person, but I think, you know, when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And oftentimes if you're saying yes to something, you may be saying no to the more important thing. And that has taken me a while to get to understand. I think with having children and having a very busy husband, um, that has helped. <laughs> that has helped say well, today, you know, today is not a good opportunity or not a good time for me to do that. Or I don't see um, that really fitting into my schedule or I may recommend somebody else for them to do. And, you know, I'd love to introduce you because she really has a heart or a passion for this. Um, I'll follow up with you with this person. And that kind of, you know, detaches me from it. Um, But I've gotten a little bit better at that. But it's, it's kind of like a every situation kind of thing. Um, and oftentimes it's, you know, who's asking, <laughs> you know, you come sometimes have to consider, oh gosh, this is coming from mother so-and-so and, you know, she bakes us pies and what does she want? <laughs> you know? So it's kind of like, oh gosh, you know, um, am I saying no, because I'm in a mode where I'm just, I'm just, I am, um, over it. <laughs> I am up to the full. I, I have no space or capacity for anything else. Or am I saying no because I don't want to deal? <laughs> you know, so kind of realizing, recognizing what does your no mean? Um, and sometimes a little yes for this one thing is like, okay, that meant so much to them that I did that. But realizing that if I say yes, I'm saying no somewhere else. Um, and that sometimes doesn't always come to the front of mind, but I do have to sometimes come back and say, you know, I may have agreed to this, but I really have someone else in mind who's perfect for it, mm-hmm. which is willing um, to give this person a call. And so that has kind of helped me um, with some of that pressure, as if you would say. Mm-hmm. That's great. I love that script. You kind of gave us a little <laughs> script right there. Yeah, I, yeah. I love the, con- the idea of connecting other people to the opportunity. Yeah. And I think I think, um, especially sometimes, traditionally in a black church, African American church, the first lady, as they call her, um, is, you know, like the first lady of the church. And oftentimes they figure, oh, I want first lady to do this because it gives some credence to my project. And whether I do it or not, your project is important if indeed you're doing it to serve others and serve the Lord. But I don't have to be the one to give it approval you know it's like if I can't get the pastor maybe I can get his wife well sometimes that's not the best way to go about you know getting whatever you feel like you need to get done um especially if the pastor's wife is like that's that's not what I'm gonna do I know that the Lord's not called me to that I know that that's not the best use of my time but um there may be somebody else here who has a great gift that she could use in this venue and she gave them the opportunity so That's what I try to do nowadays. (laughs) Yes. And that's great because you tend to know more people. You tend to know who those people are, whereas other people don't, they have connections, but they may not know that person. So I love that of saying, oh, this person you don't know would be perfect. Let me introduce you. And that in itself is a ministry. It is. It is. I think, you know, we are a connector. I mean, as a pastor's wife, oftentimes you'll, you'll get to know all kinds of people and they won't know each other, but they know you. So you're kind of like a point person, but you use that as an opportunity to say, Oh, you guys need to connect, especially if you're both interested in this project or this ministry opportunity. I think you guys would be perfect for it. 
um, let me know how it turns out, you know, so you don't feel as obligated unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Well, we have one more question from the readers and this, this woman asked, how do you navigate your own personal goals and or career if you have one on top of being a pastor's wife and mom? So where does that fit in? Do you have, do you work outside the home? I do not work outside the home currently, but as I was saying before, I think the Lord gives us gifts, not to sit on them, but to use them in ministry. And I would suggest that you have to be sure not to compartmentalize yourself. And I think maybe there's a root in this question (laughs) of how do you not become resentful of the ministry? Because the ministry oftentimes will take a front burner. And you feel like, oh, well, I'm doing it for the Lord. And yes, you are doing it for the Lord, but he's not giving you gifts to sit on them. And I think with the juggling or with um, like the back burner, there's always something working. You're always working on something. You may not be able to focus on it, um, but you are giving it some attention. So I think don't compartmentalize yourself. Don't say, oh, well, when I finish this project at the church or when this event is over or when I'm done with this ministry conference, I can get to work on this or, or whatever the case may be when you don't know when that's going to end. You know, only God knows the t- true timing of things. And I think we have to realize that it could take longer than you think and you may not have time to work on that passion project. And then you feel, you feel a little down about not finishing or pursuing something that you want to do. Uh, so I would encourage you just to keep your sweet spot going, whatever that is. If you're a creative, do something that keeps you creative. If you're working outside the home, um, find places in your work, in your career that keeps you going. Um, I think we have to be mindful of how much we contribute to the world And we give, 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 but make sure that you're doing something that fills you up as well. And I think as a maturing believer, we know that God has not called us to live in either or life. So either I do this, I can't do that because I'm doing this. I think if we're able to fulfill what he's doing, what he's asked us to do, we're able to give him glory. I think that's what he wants us to do. And I can say this, you know, we just have to trust his timing, being prayerful about what is we're doing, being deliberate always working um but it may not be what you're focused on at the time um yes. but i think we thank god that life is a marathon not a sprint right um and if you remain true to the process you're making progress and so i can just say by example i just recently opened an online shop and it is um an outlet for me to be creative mm-hmm. and uh, it came as a result of my desire to serve those in ministry, um, because I know the day to day, I know the week to week, the weekends, Sundays, I know what this role is like. And I felt, wow, this is an opportunity for me to actually serve the ministers and their families also while fulfilling my passion for being creative. And so I think I didn't come to that until I realized, Hey, I see a need that I can feel. Um, and, I believe the Lord has given it to me to do so. And I'm really excited that I'm able to do this and also serve in ministry as well. So mm-hmm. kind of combining things together, yeah. which yeah. is great. Tell us about the shop. Yeah, it's called Preacher Monday. And I know you know about that, Christine. <laughs> Preacher Monday, yes. Yeah. A Preacher Monday is actually the day where a preacher or pastor gets to rest. Well, supposed to rest because they spend pretty much all week, especially all weekends, Saturday and Sunday, serving others. That day, it shows you when they have their rest or Sabbath. So my idea behind this was to create an avenue where people can be encouraged through stationery, through art, through home goods, and um, just really encourage the encourager. Mm. So I felt, wow, this is something that I can do, and um, people can be blessed by it. And I feel like I'm serving our family, and I'm also serving the ministry as well. So I I know the needs of the pastor. I know the needs of the pew. And I really want to do something that could benefit everybody in this, Mm -hmm. in this market, in this niche market, in this ministry, as, as you say. So that's great. Well, I'll put a link to it in the show notes for everybody. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, any, any last words of advice? I'm kind of thinking what, what's the thing that 
somebody, your mentor said, or some truth that, that you've learned from the Lord as you've walked with him that has, that really holds you and helps you in ministry? Yes. I think my mother always says that we are to live unto the Lord. Our lives are for him. And I feel that that is incredibly true in all that we need to do, whether we're serving in ministry out front, whether we're supporting on the sides because we're working day to day, whether we're at home, young, young children, or if our children are older or or have left the home, I think we are to live as unto the Lord. And we've been called to be the healers of uh, the, the dealers of hope. And, and I think it's oftentimes when, especially in ministry, we want to share our faith, but sometimes that can get a little hard. <laughs> but if we share our hope, when you, when you think of hope, you know, it just kind of lifts you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like as we live unto the Lord and we share our hope, he's going to give us what we need to do those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to encourage all the ladies out there to be encouraged. Um, don't give up. This is, this is the best work. This is God's work. And we are so, so blessed and privileged to do this. And um, I'll be praying for you and um, encouraging you along the way. I really enjoyed my chat with Kirsty. She exudes joy and a settled peace that I'm sure you could hear in her voice. You can connect further with Kirsty through her website, PreacherMonday.com, or simply scroll down to the show notes and click through the links to her Instagram or her website. You'll also find ways you can connect with me there, and I'd love to hear your feedback, whether it's a question or something that resonated with you from today, or a review on your podcast platform. You'll definitely want to head to Instagram, look for me there at Christine Hoover 98 to answer the question from today's episode. What's the most helpful advice you've been given in ministry? Or what's the advice you most give to other women in ministry? Join us there for some encouragement and conversation. And also, if you're enjoying this podcast, will you please share it with someone today that you think would enjoy it as well? Friends, thanks for listening to By Faith. Join me next week as I chat with Alicia and D.A. Horton about marriage and ministry. The Hortons are church planting in L.A. and they get deep and real really quickly about the dynamics that ministry can interject into marriage that can cause difficulty and challenge. We talk about intentional ways that we can cultivate our marriages as we also are intentional about ministering to others. You won't want to miss this important conversation. Until then, have a great day, friends, and keep walking forward by faith.